Uh, we all witnessed the kind of uh, fiery exchanges between the U.S. Uh, President Donald Trump and uh, the U.S. media. What do you, how do you evaluate the first, 20, the first 48 hours since he has stepped into office? I think if we talk about his first 48 hours, I think uh, on the one hand, I think uh, President Trump has already started his uh, policy agendas both domestically and uh, internationally. Uh, domestically, he already signed some executive order to uh, not repeal, but at least uh, stop part of the Obamacare mm -hmm. to implement. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, he launched his uh, uh, policy agenda, uh, you know, priorities in the White House uh, website. Uh, and internationally, internationally, he already uh, invited uh, a prime minister from the uh, UK uh, Theresa May uh, to visit, to meet. So this is his uh, first foreign uh, meeting with the foreign leaders and also the uh, meeting with Mexican leader will come in. Mm -hmm. So those are the normal uh, normal development. But on the other hand... So he uh, did some work. Yes, yes, yes. I think really, yeah, we need to we need to notice that he did something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but at the same time, I think uh, it's very unfortunate for him to uh, trapped into this fight with uh, American media. Uh, I think this is not very meaningful for a new president, uh, on, you know, during his uh, first 48 hours to fight with media over uh, very small tribal uh, things like uh, the, the turnout, like the number mm. of people who attend the ceremony. Yeah. But obviously he and his team didn't think it was too small. Mm. They didn't think it was trivial and it, as a result to ignore it, they thought it was a very important thing to fight back. Basically they thought that in the media, in the mainstream media, there was a tendency or a movement to delegitimize mm -hmm. him from yeah. day one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, probably uh, if uh, put myself, put ourselves in his shoes, I think um, probably he has his, uh, you know, probably he's right because there are some, I think, uh, ideolo uh, ideological, you know, differences between the media and uh, and Mr. Trump. But the problem is uh, he is the president now. He's not a candidate, mm -hmm. so uh, I, I don't think he can he can win this fight over media. I think the best ta tactic should be ignore the you know the report and let the tr let the reality to speak. Rather than you know fight directly with the press, you know uh, over these numbers. Yeah, but it seems that it's difficult for him to just let go and be calm and be relaxed about it. Mm -hmm. um, does he also feel the kind of a sense of um, grievance, or mm -hmm. you know, because he didn't get enough popular vote, mm -hmm. that he wants to prove that he's liked and supported by more people, maybe than. What I, do you think? I think it's true. I think, you know, he had a very bad relationship with the media during the campaign. And uh, also after, the, after his victory, uh, there are also some bad development in the relationship. And uh, more importantly, I think, you know, we all know that Mr. Trump is an uh, anti-establishment politician. And uh, for him, you know, he want to he want to fight against the not only political establishment. I think he want to fight with political, economic, and the media establishment. So media is part of the establishment he will fight against, including both liberal and conservative. I think all those traditional mainstream media are part of the establishment that mm -hmm. he want to fight against. That's so, a huge battle. Yes, yes. That's a huge battle. I mean, he has the tool of Twitter. That is why he's clinging on to the Twitter so much. Maybe. Yeah, I think so. Or, you know, he's a Republican uh, politician. Theoretically, he can, he can, if you say that the CNN or other, you know, media are liberal media, you can rely on some conservative media. Fox They're, News? Yes, but he didn't. So it shows that he does not trust the traditional media. He does not trust the media establishment. So he'd rather use use yeah. Twitter or something. He can he can deliver his message directly, directly. to the yeah mm -hmm. to the audience. Mm -hmm. Now um, he has also been talking about uh, um, enacting new policies from day one. Mm -hmm. For instance, uh, start repealing the Obamacare. Uh, by branding China a currency manipulator from day one and start sending back illegal immigrants. Um, were there any signs that he's living up to his promises? 
I think he will uh, he will deliver his promise to some extent. Uh, so far, as we just uh, discussed uh, just now, that he already start with the Obamacare. But the problem that is he cannot deliver all his promises as you know uh, literally. I think that's too difficult. Technically, uh, for instance, uh, the currency manipulator thing that regarding to China, he need to he he had said during the campaign trail. On the campaign trail, he said he will label China as currency manipulator on the day one. Mm -hmm. He will ask the Secretary of Treasury to do that. But where is the Secretary of Treasury now? Still in Congress, waiting for the confirmation. So he's waiting. He's you know he now he's facing serious challenge from the Congress, particularly from the Democratic Party. That so far uh, he has only two secretaries. Uh, in his uh, cabinet has been uh, confirmed by the Congress. So comparing with the, 40, the first two uh, the first two days of President Obama mm -hmm. eight years ago, in the two days he has already seven secretaries. So so you don't have secretary uh, you don't have the cabinet member working in their departments. How can you implement your, uh, President Trump's uh, uh, those campaign uh, campaign wars campaign yeah. rhetoric? Maybe he was just being uh, figurative, you know. Maybe he didn't mean that from day one. Although he was making a big point, mm -hmm. saying you know he will immediately bring changes to America. Maybe he meant mm -hmm. from the very early stage. Mm -hmm. Can we see it this way? I mean, I, can he defend himself like that? <laughs> I think yeah, uh, he can say that. But pro the, the the challenge is the people who the voter who support him are waiting for his action. I think they are very eager to waiting for him, and the window of the opportunity is not very big for for President Trump because how he's, how long would you say this window of I think, opportunity uh, to erect the kind of confidence in his voters? I think the first six months is extremely important mm -hmm. if he can deliver some promises, if he can make any progress uh, uh, progress in the uh, you know on, on on economic, on labor, uh, on, on on job, on mm -hmm. infrastructure. And if he cannot have this six, first six months goes very smoothly, I think he will have very tough uh, time. And uh, then next phase is two years. That is a midterm election. Mm -hmm. I think he need to get something done before the midterm election. All the Republican Party will face a very uh, challenging uh, election two yeah. years later. Yeah. So already uh, he still has a lot of time to wait for now, yeah. uh, just uh, 48 hours into the new presidency. But uh, from this kind of sour atmosphere we have witnessed leading up to this hour, how do you think, uh, how bumpy do you think his road will be? I think uh, my personal view is the first six months will be okay. Yeah. Though, you know, I think the, the majority view think that the, he had very tough, bumpy, you know, ha uh, ways ahead. But I think in the first six months, uh, he has the Republicans basically supporting him in the Congress. I think he has the time to do something like uh, uh, cut tax, like uh, uh, make new trade deals with NAFTA and with uh, and also withdraw. TPP, mm -hmm. and he can have something like uh, infrastructure building project. I think he has an opportunity to get those things, uh, maybe not done, but to, to achieve some progress. No major forces can stop him from that because the Republican, Republican Party still control the two chambers. Mm -hmm. uh, but he will, of course, he will face a lot of criticism from media, from Democrats. But I don't think those, those forces are essential, essential enough to stop him. So he should uh, continue fighting the press like this, continue using his Twitter? <laughs> I think probably he can have a smarter tactic I think I think it's it's important for him to reunite the people because the country, the United States, mm -hmm. are quite divided. But by having a war of words with the media, is he yeah. doing that? Is I think this is the wrong tactic to fight the media. I think, uh, but you know, during his inauguration speech, he said this is a social movement. This is a movement. Mm -hmm. So probably we want to. We need to ask him: Do you want to? Do you want a revolution in the United States, or do you? Do, uh, do you want to govern the country effectively? I think so far, probably he want to. He want a revolution. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Dawei.